Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my Mythic Tutorials for starters. This tutorial's uh, playlist is going to cover every little thing about Mythic mobs, at least as far as the essentials goes, for and for people who do not know what they are doing at all, or have never created one to begin with. If you haven't created a mob to begin with, I highly recommend starting this from the beginning. I will have a little uh, timestamp below to tell you where to skip if you have and you just want to brush up a little bit. But, um, also if you've already made mobs before and you just want to know how to do something or you need some clarity on it, feel free to skip ahead to any of the following videos in order to get the information you desire. I will be going little by little with these tutorials so that way people who have never touched a mob in their life will know how to do it and where to start. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. First thing you're going to need is your mob file. This is my mob file, which is legion.yml. Of course, do know this is going to look different for everybody, as I am using a local offline server run on my computer. Um, most other players generally have some sort of FTP to their servers. Uh, I just find this way easier, and I will not be doing this tutorial showing how to set it up, but just know that whenever you get into editing your file, it should look the same. First thing you're going to need is your mob's internal name here. This is the name by which Mythic Mobs is going to recognize the mob you create. Since I decided to do Legion, we're going to go ahead and uh, put that. Excuse me. We're going to go ahead and put that in the internal name slot. Legion. Next is your mob type. I want to keep it simple, and I'm just going to go ahead and put zombie. Do know that you can use any mob or. Um, entity that is in Minecraft, as long as it coincides with your Mythic Mobs version. I'm using 1.13 right now, so I will be restricted from uh, things such as foxes and pandas. However, I will still have everything else from 1.13 and lower. Next is your display name. This is the name tag that appears above an entity whenever you proceed to put a name tag on it. So like whenever you look at a named wolf or horse or cat, you will see a little name appear above its head. That's exactly what this is. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that here. Legion. Do know that the display name here and the mob internal name are not always going to be the same. I could have this be like Legion zombie here, and this is what will display above its head, whereas the actual mob itself is still only called Legion. Next is going to be your health. That should be pretty straightforward. I generally like putting it at 100 because I find that that's not too much for testing, nor too little. Next is going to be damage. For every damage point you have, that's going to be half a heart on a player with no armor. So I'm going to go ahead and set the damage to 2, so that way I should take only a heart of damage every time the zombie attacks me. Let's go ahead and cut it there for now and see what this looks like. And before we actually start in on that, do know that we are not going to be covering this in this tutorial. This is just for me to show you how much mob or how much health the mob has. Just to prove it, I'll do this for you. Health mob.hp. You do not need this skill, but I find it pretty necessary for the sake of this tutorial. First, in order to get it going, after we save our file, we're going to have to type in a command here, mythic mobs reload. As you can see, it says mythic mobs has been reloaded, and that's going to reload our entire plugin. We're going to go in, I, I made a cage for my mob because he's a zombie and I don't want him to burn to death. So let me go ahead and spawn him in here now. So we're going to type in mythic mobs, mobs, or m, spawn, legion. And there he is. Let me back up here. As you can see, he is a zombie, and he has the orange name tag above his head as we specified. Now he's not displaying his health for some reason. Oh, because I messed up here, and you cannot use colons inside of strings like this. So if I reload, there's his health. Health equals 100. Again, you don't need this. It's not entirely necessary, but I went ahead and added it just so I can show you guys how his health is. It's going to be essential here in a second as well. Next, 
we're gonna have a thing called armor. The amount of armor points your mob has is how much less damage it's going to take from weapons. So, say he has an armor value of 5, that means he's going to take 5 less damage from whatever item I am using. So let me go ahead and give myself an axe here. Okay, so let's look at this. My diamond axe does 9 attack damage. He has an armor of 5. So that means every time I strike him, my axe should only do 4 damage to his health. We will see this reflected where his little health bar is down below, where it says health 100. So now that I've reloaded, as you can see, it's a 9 attack damage item, but he has an armor value of 5, which means I'm only going to do 4 damage to him. Do know you can set the armor value as high as you want, but since 9 is the highest value you can do in vanilla Minecraft without the use of enchantments, I highly recommend just leaving it within a range of 1 to 7. Um, say his armor value is set to 20, and I'm still using my axe which only has 9. Let's go ahead and reload this. What it's going to do is it's not going to negate all damage, but it's going to set it to the lowest possible damage value the mob can take while still being uh, still being hurt. So even though his damage or his armor value is 20 and my damage is 9, he's still going to take 1 damage because that's how Minecraft is set up, that he will still have to take damage somehow in order for it to be counted. Next and last thing I'm covering in this tutorial is faction. This isn't really an essential part of it, however it can be useful if you dis uh, if you plan to have mobs fight each other in the future. So we're going to go ahead and give him a faction name here. So we're going to go ahead and ma uh, name it Zombies. That's the first part of this tutorial playlist. Make sure to stay tuned for everything following, and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with in the future.